The following is a recording of a live questions and answers session with Chris McCann that took place on Friday, March 14th, 2014. Hello and welcome in to eBible Fellowship Questions and Answers Time, where you can interact with us with your questions and comments related to the Bible, and we'll try to respond as well as possible by going to the Bible. And so, with our Bibles at the ready, it's now time to turn things over to our speaker, Chris McCann. Good evening, Chris. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to eBible Fellowship's Question and Answer Program for Friday night. Tonight, we're going to take a look at the Bible with any questions or comments that anyone may have, and each person is invited to share what's ever on your mind by contacting us in one of the ways that were mentioned, and we'll be happy to take your call. We only have a short time together, and we're getting a little bit of a late start, so we're going to go right to the phones and to our first caller tonight. Welcome to our question and answer program. Please go ahead with your call. Hello, Chris. How are you hearing me? Very good. Thank you. Please go ahead. Because of the uh, difficulty that uh, we've been having on conference line, it's been a little difficult following what you were saying regarding uh, that there should be time no longer. Uh, we did catch one of your segments of several days ago where you were connecting that to the uh, time, times and a half uh, spoken of in Daniel and then relating that to the 1260 days of the uh, church age, making a comparison there. there. And, and then um, uh, the other night and tonight you were relating that to the, uh, to the last day of, of Judgment Day. If you might just briefly uh, review that for us. Well, yeah, the, the um, tie-in was through the, the word swear. Uh, it, it's not that um, I went to Daniel and, and, um, uh, and, and Daniel somehow relates to everything else. It, it was just looking at um, just different places in the Bible where, where God swore. And, and Daniel 12 happened to be a place where there was similar situation and language with um, the Lord Jesus lifting up his hands in Daniel 12 and swearing unto the Lord who lives forever and ever. And then we just uh, took some time to look at uh, what was being sworn to in Daniel 12. And, and that had to do with um, the promise of the end in the sense of um, the book of Daniel and the time, times and a half, um, the word of God, as God had said to Daniel, was sealed up until the time of the end. And, and uh, that covered the, the church age period. And when the church age ended and the great tribulation began, uh, then the Bible was unsealed. And um, then following that, just looking further at when God uh, would swear, and uh, the Bible has a lot of information concerning God swearing uh, regarding the promise to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob of the seed that would multiply in the land. And so that is not... Uh, in itself connected to Daniel 12. Thank you for, for going over that. Uh, tonight, we were able to hear much better, but the volume, the voice was very low at times. Uh, I don't know if you knew that, but uh, anyway, th thank you again for, for explaining uh, th that verse. Oh, you're welcome. No, I... Um, uh, I uh, didn't know that. Um, I think the recording is fine. Um, uh, recently, over the last six months, um, I've purchased 4E Bible, 
uh, much better microphones and and uh, the recordings have been pretty consistent. But um, I think we've just been struggling with Skype, uh, as far as I know. Uh, one way to find out uh, is to go to YouTube, and the study should be um, uh, within a week or so, I think, posted on eBible's YouTube channel, and uh, you you can you can listen to it there, um, and and that's a study that's taken from um, our Dropbox. So that is not recorded uh, through Skype or anything like that. And and you'll be able to um, compare. And and if there was any difficulty in in the recording itself, you would hear it there. But if there's no difficulty, then the the problem is through. Skype or you know how however it's being broadcast, but thank you um oh oh by the way, there's also if anyone is interested, you can send an email to ebiblefellowship at juno dot com and request to um receive um the studies through uh, uh rich who who i think provides a link to Dropbox. So I record the study and I upload it uh, to Dropbox, and and then um, that is made available. Uh, Bill has um, somehow made that available for download to people, uh, so that you can also uh, listen to the study that way. And and again, that would be sending an email to ebiblefellowship at juno dot com. But thank you, and let's go to our next caller. Welcome to our question and answer program, please. Go ahead with your call. Uh, good evening, Chris. How are you tonight? I'm doing well, thank you. Uh, Chris, in your study of Revelation uh, chapter 10, uh, verses 5 to 17, uh, to 7, sorry, part 6, uh, you guided us to the book of Daniel, uh, Matthew 24, 15, uh, and other books. I, I'm especially interested in uh, Daniel chapter 9, verses 24 through 27 in Matthew 24 15 where we find the same verbiage uh, the abomination of desolation standing in the holy place uh, I've listened to your study uh, carefully and and uh, it is very clear that what we have learned that the moment that God entered uh, ended the church age the Holy Spirit removed himself and came out of the mist and then Satan entered and uh, took his, his standing in the holy place like we read in matthew 24 15 and uh, and that was the beginning of the end of the period of time times and a half and actually it started the period the beginning the period of the end now um in and we have learned from your study uh, i've learned also that this desolate condition will continue until the end of times now um uh, as we know that when, on, on May 21, 2011, when it, the first day of universal judgment, uh, Satan was, this is the understanding that we had, Satan was, I remember saying, it was demoted, <laughs> and uh, it was no longer in the church, he had no more power, it was powerless. But now I was thinking with this, this new learning from your study, um, and the evil um, and destructive events that are happening both in the world today and both described in the Bible and the prophecies of Revelation and uh, Daniel, uh, could it be that um, Satan today is in the churches not as a ruler, as with the same power, but he's still there and fervently um, active uh, in the world? because now the church is in the world, you know, Babylon is all one now, and they, they, because it will be like that until the very end. Yes, yes, Satan is, uh, he, he still exists, and he still goes about seeking to destroy in the world and in the church. Uh, okay. You know, remember, remember when he was bound for... Um, the figurative thousand years or, or the time of the church age that uh, Revelation 2 and 3 talks 
um, a good deal about the synagogue of Satan in the early church. Satan was very active in those churches, establishing his people, his emissaries, and even in the parable of the wheat and the tares, um, he sowed tares amongst the wheat while men slept. And that's another figure for the church age. So he was not ruling all churches at that time, but he was in the church causing trouble and, and, and doing damage. And, and so uh, at this point, he has been removed from that official rule in the world and in the church, but he still exists. And okay. we're also taught that by uh, the book of Esther. After yeah. Haman, who was the adversary of the Jews, a type of Satan, was hanged, his ten sons continued for some time until the Feast of Purim, some months later. And, and the ten sons would identify with the, the ten horns that we read yeah. of in Revelation um, 13, where uh, it says in verse 1, I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. And Haman is killed to spirit on the 17th day of the second month in the book of Esther to spiritually represent Satan being put down and 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 um, remember when God first bound Satan at the cross he he speaks of him uh, receiving a deadly wound and then in Revelation we read his deadly wound was healed when he's loosed from the bottomless pit and then he uh, uh, once again, uh, well, he enters into the church as the man of sin. So God there used language of Satan being killed, a deadly wound, even though he did not die at the cross. He was, yeah. it, it was just the, the work of Christ that, and, and God's plan to limit Satan throughout the church age. And, and so when, um, when Christ was victorious on May 21, 2011, by completing his salvation program and saving all to be saved, then that was, um, as, uh, as, as viewed in the book of Esther, like Satan was killed. And also in Daniel, in Daniel 7, it says in um, verse 10, a fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. A thousand thousands ministered unto him, and ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The judgment was set, and the books were open. I beheld then, because of the voice of the great words which the horn spake, I beheld even till the beast was slain and his body destroyed. And given to the burning flame. So there's language that in the day of judgment, um, this is this is God, eternal God, who is judging. The judgment was set, and then the beast is slain and given to the burning flame, just as we read in the book of Revelation, chapter 19, uh, that uh, the beast, uh, does it say the beast in Revelation 19? In verse 20, and the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet. And, and then at the end of verse 20, these both were cast alive into a lake of fire burning with brimstone. So the beast is given to the burning flame. That's judgment day. And, and then it says in verse 12 of Daniel 7, as concerning the rest of the beast, they had their dominion taken away, yet their lives were prolonged for a season and time and yeah. that fits exactly yeah. with Haman and his 10 sons Haman he was ruling over his house with his sons but then came that that awful 
17th day of the second month for him, and he he was hanged, but his sons continued for a time, yet without dominion. The house of Haman was taken away from him and given to Mordecai. And yeah. likewise, Satan was put down from all rule on May 21, 2011, but continues for a time uh, during this prolonged period of judgment. He still exists. We should never think he doesn't. And, and that's um, explained here uh, as God uses the figure of one beast slain and the rest of the beasts, beasts yeah. continuing. And, and Satan is aware of God having removed the strength, I mean, the, the restraint on, on the world. Well, Satan is aware that that is aware that God that, has yes, that judgment days. day has come, that yeah. um, that all um, all of the captives have been set free. I mean, just just yeah. think of the battle that has been raging for thousands of years throughout the history of the world. Uh, God, who obligated and and guaranteed the salvation of His elect has been sending forth the gospel into the world to find and to save those people. And Satan has been constantly battling, constantly attempting to thwart and, and to hinder and to stop God from accomplishing that purpose of saving those elect individuals who were predestinated from the foundation of the world. And and so uh, in the Old Testament, he he uh, would raise trouble uh, against the family when God dealt with individuals like Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and then he would raise trouble against Israel when God dealt uh, his kingdom was represented by national Israel, and and then when when God uh, started using churches, well we. Just just mentioned Satan entered in to the congregations with sowing tares amongst the wheat. Why? Why the the constant assault and focus upon um, uh, upon the church? Because that's where the word of God was, and the word of God frees the the captive sinner. The word of God delivers uh, an individual from bondage. Satan doesn't care about haunted houses. He doesn't care about, um, you know, the, the occult and all those things. It's, sure, he, he can be acknowledged and, and worshipped that way. But Satan's primary focus has always been the Word of God, the Bible. And, and he stirs men up to come against the truth of the Word of God. And he's always done that. And, and God has always sent forth his Word. And finally, the time came where God sent the declaration of Judgment Day into all the world prior to May 21, 2011, in a way that had never been done before. And the world heard this message and Satan couldn't stop it. He, he was fighting furiously. I remember on May 20th, um, my wife and I were at a train station and, and we were handing out tracks and, and, uh, there was this man who was just following us around, shouting to people, screaming not to take these things. And, and, Satan was stirring up people in a great way because he was uh, afraid of, of what was taking place. He, he did not want God to complete his salvation program. And then suddenly, after May 21, it all stopped. God's uh, sending forth of the gospel, and, and, and you know, God was behind that. God's always been behind the sending forth of his people into the world with the gospel. How beautiful are the feet of them, we read in one place, 
uh, in the Bible. In another place, it says, how beautiful are the feet of him that bring glad tidings of good news, because God is so much behind moving and willing his people to accomplish that purpose. It is as though he did it. And and now, uh, for almost three years, no activity, no activity, no track trips, no hardly at all uh, people going forth with uh, the gospel message, uh, just some individuals who, who are confused and don't know what's going on. And, and just the, the mighty ministry of family radio, what a great voice that was opened up, began to say, well, that's it. After May 21, God has saved everyone. That came from family radio, from Mr. Camping, prior to his stroke, when he, he correctly understood the righteous are righteous still and the filthy are filthy still, and, and that's it. We're, uh, family radio stopped their printing presses, and, and it, it was just uh, an amazing thing. And, and so God has made it known. He has not concealed this. God foretold and said, uh, uh, seek me while I may be found, because the door shuts. That's what was told to the world. And Satan's aware of that. The, the door shuts on May 21, 2011. And so the, uh, the Bible has uh, continued to confirm that. And, and God's people have searched the scriptures and found much more information that, um, that, that uh, does establish that that is exactly what God did. But yeah. thank you. Uh, thank you, Chris. Thank you. Thank- Good night. Good night. Thank you for those verses. And let's go to the next person on the phone. Welcome to our Friday night question and answer program, please. Go ahead with your call. Uh, Hey, Brother McKenna Spasha from Sacramento. Um, Just uh, wanted to uh, (coughs) share um, two two comments. Uh, Very interesting. You mentioned about the guy that was following you and your wife and yelling, um, do not take those tracks. I had a very similar experience, actually, a couple of times. There was one uh, guy in a college, he started following me before May 21, you know, and start yelling to people not to take any tracks, but what he didn't realize is actually he got a lot of people's attention and a lot of people started taking more tracks after mm-hmm. that. And also, I was in Seattle and I saw uh, uh, people, um, about six people, and they had May 21 signs, so I started rejoicing. You thought it was one fellow believers, but when I came closer, it was actually a group of atheists, and they had their little tracks that it was a relief fund after May 21. And, and they, but what was interesting about it, they were um, saying, you know, on, the, on their information, they had Oakland Family Radio, May 21, Judgment Day. And um, what they were actually against it, but they did not realize they were actually um, kind of also delivering that message to the world. So God can use um, different uh, circumstances to pass out his messages. So that's kind of awesome. Um, yeah. And also, I just wanted to make a comment regarding a church age. Um, we know, uh, biblically, it's uh, started um, at, uh, or ended, the church age ended in 1988 and May 21. But it's interesting, um, I, where I come from, Soviet Union, and um, <coughs> we, we immigrated in 1988. And I was about nine years old, so I remember a lot of um, uh, details at that time, there was something happening across the whole Soviet Union, and, and about a year later, it fell apart. But when we left in the uh, end of 1988, I've uh, experienced um, a lot of churches from where I came from, Baltics, and I have uh, roots in Ukraine. Well, there's a lot of churches and pastors, and they were just leaving the Soviet Union, going um, outside to America and, and everywhere else. And there's a lot of uh, you know people that came to Sacramento or the East Coast, and I happened to come to Sacramento, and that's eventually down the road. I started listening to family radio, and, um, you know, God had uh, led us and me to to the true gospel through that. But definitely there is something secular happening, what uh, you know, um, in Soviet Union as far as the churches goes and, and this kind of movement. I just thought I'd share that. Well, thank you. Um, it, it is interesting how God... Uh, 
controls our lives and our circumstances and and um i um also began to listen to family radio right around that time in 1987 and i um i was thankful that that god had led me there it it, it you know uh, the circumstances were completely different and and many of us um have uh, the story, you know, of how we found the radio dial, and 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 it it is um, just the mercy of God that He led us to truth. He led us to where the true gospel was, and and especially at this time period of the world, when when we think of the amount of false gospels that are that are out there. It, it it and and that was um satan's purpose uh, that that was satan's aim uh, when he was sowing tares amongst the wheat uh, he he has his people his emissaries develop other gospels and and so you get all these churches and all these different doctrines and and the idea is well here is the truth and the truth will save, and that's the last thing that Satan wants. So he distorts, he tries to cover up, he tries to multiply other gospels, other religions, and and it becomes a sea of falsehood, and and somewhere in there is the truth. And, uh, of course, his hope is, well, the the elect will never find that truth because there's too much distortion. There's just too many churches that are false uh, during the church age, and 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 too many uh, gospels that have added, and too many that have subtracted. And uh, it it is um, humanly speaking uh, a good strategy to to multiply uh, the deceitful gospels to the point where it it's like a needle in a haystack to find the true gospel would be successful uh, naturally if God were not working supernaturally to help his people. And, and so God knows each and every one of his elect and he, uh, he is, omnipresent and and sovereign and controls their circumstances and 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 so he is working in the lives of his people all over the world uh, you were in russia or ukraine and and many were in uh africa and indian china and, and uh, nepal and places we we never even heard of and god is working in their circumstances and and orchestrating events and and working in that little ministry of family radio um, and working with the the lowly believers uh, um, that are listening to that ministry and are pooling their resources together so that suddenly there is this great voice that can be heard through radio and satellite and and internet uh, all, and and god opening up technology at exactly the time the population is exploding during the great tribulation to make it possible for a few uh, the harvest is plentiful but the laborers are few is not a plea for more people to get involved it's stating a fact that god will reach the great multitude through the few his elect as as he did allow them to uh come together and and then through primarily the ministry of family radio to broadcast the the information and and then just spread all over the earth an, an incredible thing and and satan just had no chance um you you Nobody has any chance when they fight against God. God is is just too great, and and uh, His ways are are just beyond 
uh, our, our ways of understanding, yet he does send his word forth to accomplish his purpose, and he has accomplished that purpose of, of finding all the elect. But thank you for your comments, and let's go to the next caller tonight. Welcome to our Friday night question and answer program. Please go ahead with your call. Hello, good night, Brother Chris. I just want uh, that last caller. I, I believe I met that gentleman in uh, Southern California. If I if I think he's who it is, he had met the the caravan, um, the caravan group, and he took us to various places. Uh, if this is a person, is very joyful to hear his voice. Just want to say hello, um, Chris. Can we take a look at um, Exodus? Uh, chapter 4, verse 8 through, actually from verse 5 through 9. Exodus 4, beginning in verse 5, that they may believe that Jehovah God of their fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, hath appeared unto thee. And Jehovah said furthermore unto him, Put now thine hand into thy bosom, And he put his hand into his bosom. And when he took it out, behold, his hand was leprous as snow. And he said, Put thine hand into thy bosom again. And he put his hand into his bosom again and plucked it out of his bosom. And behold, it was turned again as his other flesh. And it shall come to pass, if they will not believe thee, neither hearken to the voice of the first sign, that they will believe the voice of the latter sign. And oh, um, and, and it shall come to pass, if they will not believe also these two signs, neither hearken unto thy voice, that thou shalt take of the water of the river, and pour it upon the dry land, and the water which thou takest out of the river shall become blood upon the dry land. Um, can we draw a spiritual conclusion from that as to, um, and there are two signs. Uh, the first sign and the latter sign, and I, 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 and the verse nine. I'm kind of sensing the time that we are in now. Do you think we can draw a spiritual conclusion, kind of tie it in to the you know, God salvation plan, the end of the church age, the great multitude that came in, um, and the the time that we are in judgment, which the which I think the water represents um, the gospel, which has now turned to blood. And it's not saving, but it's just saving judgment. Well, the um, the uh, turning the water of the river into blood is found in the book of Revelation as one of the plagues, one of the judgments that that um, it, it's found in describing judgment on the third part and also the judgment on the world. Um, but I, I, I don't know. I've wondered about these signs because, well, the first sign of turning the, the rod turning into a serpent, it, it just seems so simple, so um, j- just after, um, you know, what, what follows, what, what comes when God brings those mighty plagues. And yet he starts off with a very simple sign, and maybe that's... That's why it. We know that Pharaoh um, was smug about it and and thought it was like a magician's trick. And his magicians did a similar thing, except uh, Moses's rod uh, swallowed his serpent, swallowed up their serpents, and putting the hand into the bosom, and then taking it out of his bosom, and it was leprous, and then putting it back again. And, and taking it out again, I think that relates somehow to the Lord Jesus and, and to the cleansing of sin. As sin is typified by leprosy, and um, the, the word bosom, um, well, I, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm just not qualified, I guess, to, to say. I, uh, I, I really can't explain very well exactly what God is doing here. Um, and I, I, I don't see how it relates more than we can see a similarity in the judgment of the blood, the, the water turned to blood, but I don't see how we can relate it to, um, the, the three periods that you mentioned. Hey, uh, Chris, 
Uh, can I, I want to make one statement. Um, I, I say this with, with, with great humility and, um, and with fear before God. Uh, I, I went out uh, early this week um, and hand out tracks. And um, I, I saw, I, I witnessed something that uh, a lot of the Christians, uh, by the way, you know, 500 people went by without taking a track before one person would take. Uh, it's not easy to, to give that you know, so if we give it out, prepare to stand there for a long time before you know, yeah. get a stack um, of tracks You live out. in the, you live in the New England, England area, people. don't you? But, yeah, New, well, yeah, I'm in the I know New England. You're in I Connecticut. Isn't that New sort York of like City. New England? I'm sorry? Oh, never never mind. I'm sorry for interrupting. Please continue. Okay. Well, I have, uh, yeah, well, I was in New York City, and I was in an area where, uh, a lot of Hasidic Jew, a lot of Jews um, um, pass, and like I said, all the Christians had passed by. Some of them had smokes on their faces, and you know they look, they all look, but they didn't, they didn't fight it. They just continue walking, and and those there are those who had a smoke on their face. But what I noticed from the Jews was they looked at it with great interest. Never, they didn't take any. Uh, but they all seemed to knew what it was. And uh, there was a group of Hasidic Jews, young boys, that came and took one out of my hand, but they were doing it in a, in a, a place uh, like they were playing. But I looked at them as they walked away. They never threw it, and threw it away, or, but they took it and they went with it. Now, I didn't think anything of that until I was in my hometown yesterday, and I have the, um, the signs on, on the back of my vehicle. I was pulling into a gas station, and I heard a cop uh, blowing their horn, you know, frantically. Um, and it kind of startled me, so I thought I was doing something wrong. Uh, but then when I looked, was a uh, Hasidic Jew, uh, a family in a car, and uh, they were blowing at me. And as they passed, they all looked at the, the vehicle as I pulled into the gas station. And because I was startled by that, uh, I started thinking, and I said, and then I started putting the two together um, in the sense that, uh, isn't there a scripture that talks about God shall leave the, uh, the, the nation of Israel in blindness until the fullness of the Gentile comes in? Uh, does that? I'm, I'm, not, I'm being very, very careful here. I'm not trying to speculate or... It's my imagination. I truly did observe these two incidents. Yeah, well, yeah, you're referring to Romans, um, and there, there is a, um, a, a chosen people, um, an elect, amongst all the, the people. And so some, some are Jews uh, that God has chosen. Um, now, let's see, we're, I think that's... Romans, Romans 11, in, um, in verse 25, For I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery, lest ye should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part is happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. And so, or in this manner, all Israel shall be saved. So once the fullness of the Gentiles come in, and that would be um, the, the completion of God's salvation program, then all spiritual Israel will be saved. Now, that, that's an interesting question. What does God mean blindness in part is happened to Israel until that point? Um, uh, I, I don't know. Um, because May 21, 2011 was the point when all Israel did become saved. That's something interesting to look at and think of. Um, but but let, let's do that. Let's um, uh, let's spend some time looking at that verse. I appreciate I appreciate your call and also your comments. And I would like to thank you and everyone for calling in and sharing your comments, your questions, and Bible verses. And it is always a privilege and a blessing to us as we can read 
the Word of God and consider what God has said to us through His Word. But we have come to the end of our time tonight, so I'll say good night, and may the Lord's perfect will be done. And thanks for joining us again for eBible Fellowship's Questions and Answers Time with your speaker, Chris McCann. You can join us for these Questions and Answers sessions Sunday afternoon following Sunday studies and Monday and Friday evenings following the Monday and Friday evening studies. Until next time, may the Lord's perfect will be done.